I'm very lucky that the tide is so far out today so I can actually get right down to the bottom of the southernmost of the rock armour groins here at Mapleton and when you do that you can really see the impact that the groin is having on the beach not so much in terms of the width of the beach if we look at the beach width here and then slowly spin round and have a look at the beach width to the south then there isn't that much immediate apparent difference but what is key is the height of the beach and the way in which then that may well impact upon uh, the ability of the beach to absorb wave energy and if I'm just trying to be careful here whoop, not careful enough well, let's try that again so if I if we look along the groin this is the up updrift side of the groin and we can see that there's a be the beach is very high on that side and then on the, the other side of the groin the beach surface is much much lower and particularly at the top of the beach uh, the high beach there is going to reduce the run-up of waves. We can see on this updrift side of the beach that actually the swash and saturated zone from where the last high tide got to is well short of the uh, rock armour revetment, whereas on the other side of the beach uh, then the swash is getting much, much closer to the base of the cliffs. Now, the effect of that, particularly in winter storms, is going to be that the beach acts as a better coastal protection here between the groins because there's more sediment buildup. It's going to absorb more of the wave energy and mean that um, the base of the cliffs here at Mappleton are far less likely to be subject to wave attack than those cliffs further down the coast uh, at Great Cowden. So, Whilst it hasn't necessarily affected the beach width, width very visibly, the impact on the height of the beach is quite considerable. And I'd ever estimate that the beach is maybe uh, two and a half, even three meters higher on the updrift side of the groin than it is on the downdrift side. 